Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first ever edition of TEF Rewind. It's where we bring on CrossFit Games athletes and we relive iconic moments and events. Mm -hmm. So we're going to Start with our good friend, Jason Kalipa, the 2008 fittest man on earth. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I I'm honored. So what are we calling it? We're calling it the TEF Rewind. Throwback? Rewind. Rewind. Okay. Throwback. T yeah. T I think that's a, that's the working title. Yep. You know, <laughs> subject hey, to change. I'm honored, man. I'm honored to be uh, the first. And, you know, we, we were talking about this briefly. And as soon as you brought up the idea, I was like, hell yeah. Because I think there's so much to unpack uh, from mm -hmm. an athlete's perspective that is impossible to um to to relate sometimes when you're watching it or whatnot and so yeah behind the scenes thoughts i'll, I'll give today so what we're going to go through today is this is one of my favorite events of all time it's what mm -hmm. and i think it's just because of the unique nature of it it's kind of the first time we ever saw something like this and it's the burden run in 2013 an event you obviously won yeah it was, I think it was the fourth event of the weekend. Yep. Fourth event. And you were leading going in. But before we get into that, just take us back to 2013 and you going into the games. Because I know a lot had changed for you in your training and you know, what you were focusing on leading up to the games that year. Yeah. I almost want to pull up the leaderboard from 2013. I think I might, I might pull that up because it'll give me a better, I, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this year it went with a swim, then two row events. Is that what it mm -hmm. was? Uh, yep. Tommy? Okay. Exactly. Good. All right. So yeah, leading up to this year's event, um, I really was taking more time focusing on endurance in particular. And what was happening is if you look at my performance, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, it was like top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10, 30th, top 10, top 10. And it was those longer endurance events that were taking me from that podium position. And the long and short of it is Chris Hinshaw was working out at our gym. He was one of our members. And I just remember, you know, meeting with him and just be like, Hey man, I, I need help with my endurance events. When I look at my performances, it's just blatantly obvious that there's a gap there. And, and can you help me? And, and he spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time, put a lot of work in and we spent uh, at least a good year, I'd say leading up to the 2013 CrossFit games to feel like the confidence we needed to go out there and go, um, go get after it. So yeah, that, that, that's how it kind of can transpire. Mm -hmm. And this was before, I mean, the CrossFit community is well familiar with Chris Hinshaw now, but this is before he had built aerobic capacity as a brand and, and all of that. So was it really just a chance happening of he was at your gym and you looked him up and you knew who he was, or, um, was there a little bit of research behind it? You know, that's a really good question. So at the time we had a variety of different gyms in the Bay area and he was working out at one, he was working out at Mountain View and Redwood City. I believe he was at Mountain, the first time I met him, he was at Mountain View Gym. And mm -hmm. I had heard that he had a professional triathlon background. Now, Chris Hinshaw, I don't know if many people know this, but I mean, he was, he was like an executive in sales for years. Like he had, he had, you know, kind of given up the, or not given up, but he had retired from the sport of triathlon and Ironmans many, many years before. And so I knew that he had a background in, in the Ironman. And so I was just looking for his advice. Now that, that sparked something in him. And then after some success, I introduced him to another athlete. He got introduced to another athlete, he got introduced to another athlete. And long and short of it is he was eventually able to give up his full-time career in sales in Silicon Valley and then pivot full-time to aerobic capacity and, and training, um, athletes. And, you know, he's a really good example of someone who, um, proved value and then asked for money, right? He was a guy who just was out there really trying to see, can I make these athletes better? And then over time, I know that if I can make these athletes better, there will be a business case for it. He was never in it for the money. Um, and, and that's kind of how it all started. It's just, it was just me hearing he had a background mm -hmm. and boom, 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 boom. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it. Yep. Let's Wanna do this? All right. Good burden run. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Hang on one second. I got to get this set up. I'm pulling this up on my, um, I'm pulling up the, the games for the leaderboard. Okay. Um, so in case we do an audio version of this, I'm going to do, I'm going to hit play here in three, two, one. All right. So there's the brackets. Look at that. The old, the old shield. Oh yeah. That was a good one. Okay. This intro, I forgot about this. Like I remember how cool this was when we first had it, like going down the blue hall and seeing all these old, 
epic moments in the yeah. games. It's so funny because Jason, we were talking about this before. How at the time we were so pumped for this intro, and now yeah. it definitely looks a little bit like your old video game when you go back and play it like ten years prior. <laughs> Dude, look at listen to Sean here talking about yeah, the game. Yeah, this is my second year doing it. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're going to show the stand. I don't think we show the standings here in a second. Yep. Yeah. You had, look at you, 261 points. You had a 40 point lead over Garrett Fisher coming into this event. And who Garrett this, Fisher, by the way, is my training partner and, and, yeah. uh, and one of our coaches at the gym at the time. Yeah, and and that, this was kind of his emergence too, right? Because you guys were kind of you know, training in lockstep for that season and he was a rookie and never, you know, I, I feel like at the time, you know, there was a lot of uh, media coverage around NorCal, you know, because you guys were just up the road. Yeah. And so seeing multiple qualifiers, it was an easy transition for us. But yeah. And if you want to just pause it real quick, I'll kind of dive in here real quick. So we'll let it roll. We'll just talk. Yeah, 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 talk about it. Are you, oh, you're just going to let it roll. Yeah. We're letting yeah, it go. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, with the burden run. Yeah. Because it started off with the burden run started off with a, oh, here we go. 2.1 mile run. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you get in. So. To kind of add some color here and clear, like the night before this event, uh, Dave Castro takes us into the arena and he tells us what's going to happen. And I remember being in the soccer stadium and visualizing to myself, like, man, I would love to be the guy that comes into the soccer stadium first because I know if I come into the soccer stadium first, I'm winning this event because really the sled pull was just kind of like a, it just added some theatrics. Yeah. It added some whatever, but it wasn't the bulk of the event, right? And I, I visualized that night just saying to myself, what would it be like? What would the crowd erupting be like? What, what would that experience be like? I'm like, I want that experience. And the next day, you know, we show up in a couple behind the scene things. I, uh, I had to have some talks with our friends over at Reebok because, you know, I actually did a post about this on social media recently where – it, it was my job. I had one goal going into the CrossFit Games, and that was to win the CrossFit Games. That was the goal. And anything that hindered me from that position was not in alignment with my goals. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, they hadn't had a really good running shoe. And so Hinshaw had had um, us running with an ASIC shoe. Actually, Garrett, who's out in first here mm -hmm. with his shirt off, looking as studly as Garrett does, <laughs> um, we would be on the track three days a week for months and months and months training. And in particular with these ASICs, we used to call them the fast shoes because mm -hmm. we wouldn't wear any socks with them. And they were super duper light. If you look at his shoes right here, he's wearing them. I'm somewhere in the back or middle of the pack. We actually I'm get to see wearing. you here in a second. Yeah. I'm wearing the exact same shoe as he is. So what ended up happening is um, I covered my shoe with some tape. It eventually came off, but it was just kind of like a random side note for this event. Mm. So before we got started, there you are. where am I at? Shirtless guy right behind Frederick Agidius there, bottom Oh, of the man, yeah. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. <laughs> so, you know, before the event started, we um, all the athletes stood on a line. And at the time, looking at my scores, I had 13th in the pool. Not bad. First, first. So going into this, I was still in first, obviously, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But they didn't seat us in the run any way different. Like, it wasn't like you were stacked in corrals or anything like that. You just were like, hey, go get ready. And then we're going to start the buzzer, right? Mm -hmm. So Hinshaw taught us this technique where you would stand out in front of the crowd. So let's just say there was 50 people waiting in a, in a group. You walked out in front of all of them. You started to act like you were stretching or doing leg swings or, or doing like a Samson stretch. And then when they said 30 seconds, right? We're like, all right, 30 seconds to the event. You just chilled. You kept stretching. And then like 10 seconds and you walk right to the front and you just you just tap the guy on the shoulder and be like, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. And then by the time they they know what's going on, boom, you're in front of them and it's three, two, one, go. That <laughs> That's awesome. That, awesome. that is good stuff. I That's thought you were going to tell me that you were going to get in a three-point stance and just barrel, barrel through them again, football style, but that's a lot more savvy. Dude, it was super savvy. I'll never forget, because he talked about that. He taught us a lot of different running techniques. Uh, not many of them I was able to impart on this particular event, but that was one I could because you're just right up front. I'll never forget. I don't even know who I went up against. Maybe it was like Matt Chan or someone, right? I just walked up and was like, hey, man, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. And then I just, boom. Three, two, one, boom. <laughs> <laughs> man, Fisher had a lead here. I remember this. Yeah, was it was cooking. Front. Did you guys discuss uh, like pacing? How yeah. uh, what, Maybe what the mile, mile pacing that you wanted for this? Yeah, I think we were going after like a six-minute mile on this particular case. You know, kind of go out there. 
Um, but Garrett, I mean, he was he was running like probably like a 540 here. I mean, maybe even less. But, you know, a lot of people thought when they were watching this event, oh, Garrett went out too hot. Dude, Garrett is an exceptional runner for how big mm -hmm. he is. Exceptional. So I knew going into it that he was going to, you know, more likely going to win this particular run event. It was my goal to stay enough in the pack to then catch up on the on the pig was, mm -hmm. was my vision. And it's funny to hear you say that now. Like, I think going into that season, if someone had said, Jason Kalipa is going to run a six-minute mile pace for this 2.1-mile start, they might have scoffed at you. I mean, back in, at that point, and not this isn't meant to be a knock at you, but like people have memories of the 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 hill uh, the hill trail run in 2009, yeah. where like you know you were like collapsed on the ground, and like that's like you said, it wasn't a hallmark of your game at this point. But even still, coming off of the marathon row, it was like okay, well maybe this is a little bit more of a a return to the norm with this test, and you know little did we know. You had you had you had all these Hinshaw tricks up in your back back sleeve. Yeah, we spent a lot pocket. of time, like even today. So I'm actually going to go pretty soon and do a mile and a half run with Customs and Border Protection as part of their like PT test. And even today, I've spent so much time on the track working pacing that I know what a six minute mile feels like. I know mm -hmm. what a one thirty four hundred feels like, and I know that because we would work. 200s, 400s, 800s, and miles at specific pacing. In particular, we would do 800 meter repeats regularly at our goal mile pace so that we knew what the foot stride would feel like. And that's why like, I wore a Garmin or whatever on this particular event, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I looked at it one time uh, just because I didn't need to. I already knew what that felt like. That's a big part of his training, right? The feel. Like I, I know on the rower, he won't let you look at the screen. And he'll try to have you guess what your pacing is so you can start to build that like physical awareness around what your pacing is. That's right. Like I could hear on a rower and I could hear on a bike, especially an assault bike, what RPMs or what pace I'm at. Because of the amount of time I've spent training those, I could I could just walk into our gym and hear an athlete doing it. And I know if they're at 60 or 75 RPMs just huh. by the way the fan moves. And it's the same thing with running or it's the same thing with rowing. Mm. So at this point, you know, you're back in the pack, but at, and obviously just fine. But as a competitor, you know, you always talk, we talk about or hear a lot about run your race, not someone else's race. Now, as guys start to pull away, yeah. you're a competitor. How do you keep yourself from getting into someone else's race and then you're screwing this whole thing up? That's the hardest part, man, is that one thing you got to remind yourself when you're in a, when you're in a moment like this, and I'm so happy you kept this running. Thanks for, thanks for doing that instead of pausing. That was, that was <laughs> but like, if you, it, when you're an athlete in a moment like this, you need to remind yourself of you, you created a game plan for a specific reason. Meaning when you're in the middle of the run and you're running and you have plenty of time here, I mean, you're, you're doing this for like, let's just say 15 minutes or whatever it is. Right. So you're shaking out your shoulders. You already saw Garrett do that, whatnot, but you have to remind yourself prior to my heart rate getting elevated and prior to me being in this state of, you know, like chaos myself my coach and my peers decided that our best move was this and reminding yourself of why you created that game plan is key number one now with very short periods of time left in the in the event you got to take that game plan and throw it out the window but at a time like this what's going through your head is you know move fast breathe slow keep your heart rate under control and remember you came up with this game plan for a reason this wasn't just something you pulled out of your butt you came up with it because you believe it put you in the best position to win. So stick with it. I, I'm curious if, obviously, we just saw Garrett Fisher. This I love this Smashing shot it. here. You get to see yes. him just smacking it. But knowing that you had spent a lot of time training with him, you got to see this firsthand in in, in training. Did did seeing him like smash it give you any sort of confidence around what you guys had put in collectively? Because you know, if you if you're used to seeing Garrett smash runs and you see him smashing it in competition, you're like. Okay, this is translating a little bit. Yeah, I mean, for me at this point in time, I knew Garrett was going to be ahead of me. Like, that was no question. Um, I think maybe I was looking for Neil, um, but I just, I didn't, I couldn't even see Garrett at this point. So I had no idea how well he was performing. Yeah. It's, um, where am I? You guys am I with you? Rich? Oh, wait, hang on. That wasn't you. No. Nope. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm yeah, right here. You're back right, right here. here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And actually, you could see, I don't know if you, yeah, I do have a watch. I, I do have a garment on, but I'm just kind of, trucking along right just staying in yeah. front of rich just moving and just trying to stay in the middle of the pack 
And what I do know is that when I got to the pig, so here we are at fi uh, 15 minutes, I think Garrett comes in. So that would put him at, yeah, about a six, six and a half. Yeah, six and a half. Well, because it was six, it was longer than two miles. It was like 2.1 something. Yeah. But yeah, so, so it would have been about a six minute mile, maybe. Yeah, let's see. Distance are just, you know, just kind of a concept. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, Garrett's, Garrett's pumping, right? And I, rem I do remember when I got in from the run, right? When I actually saw him on, because I, I ran in and I saw him on the pig. I do remember what went through my mind was like, oh boy, Garrett was like, he was relatively struggling. He had only had like three pig flips, if I'm not mistaken, by the time I got in. And I was like, okay, like, my first flip, I need to treat this like it's a, the heaviest deal I've ever done in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Is that is that even at this point, right? Because now we're we're more than a mile in. We're probably a closer to a mile and a half at least. Are you thinking like, hey, all these guys ahead of me, they're not going to move that pig the way that, that the way that I am? Yeah, I, I had the confidence going into it to know that you know I I felt pretty confident going in that I was going to be able to move that pig better than most, especially like you know. Uh, smaller athletes in, in the pack. Garrett would, would have been an exception. I was expecting him to perform well in this. I was expecting Neil Maddox to perform well, but you know, I was expecting to perf my, per myself to not be very limited by this pig. I don't even know if we had a chance to, to try it before. Yeah, I was going to ask you Dick, if they let you mess around that thing at all. Yeah. I can't remember. You know, actually I was looking at the wrong clock. Uh, I was looking at our recording time. So it's at what? 10 40 right now. 10 40, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, if he gets in, I, I, he probably gets in around 13, 14 minutes. We'll see. One, one thing I will say is, and you see it here with, with Garrett. We saw it a little bit with you. You said you were kind of just lumbering along. But even for your, I guess, quote, unquote, lumbering, there was a difference in posture in how you guys ran. You could, I mean, you can tell now, especially with more, more of Hinshaw's techniques and things like that in, in the community. But you could tell that when someone's running hard and it's having a hard effect on them or when they're running hard and their body and their posture was relaxed. Yeah, I mean, I look at Josh. He's just smooth, he right? Like, yeah. He's like so, a baby. So young and full of hope there. <laughs> I know. I know. He's ready to go. Man. But this was this was such a cool event because it was, it, it was a cool event because the night before, Dave kind of you know laid a framework for it. Really, I, I know I couldn't have been the only one just visualizing success, you know, because you get mm -hmm. there. You run, you get into the, the football field, then you go to the soccer stadium. And, uh, you know, and, and at this point, all the nerves are gone too, right? You're on day two, first event, day two, all the nerves are gone. Meaning, like, the way the CrossFit games always work is day one, event one is like level 10 nerves. Mm -hmm. Day one, event two and three, like, let's just say eight or seven. By the time day two comes around, you're like, let's go. And then by the time Sunday comes around, you're like, <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it was there was there any difference, you know, coming into the day in a lead? I mean, we mentioned before that you had a forty-ish point lead, uh, but also even more so, like a, a close to a sixty or seventy point lead over Rich at the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I imagine at, at early on you're like no, you know, no lead is safe, but it's it's pretty nice to have that cushion. Yeah, look at that. He comes in at 12.30. So, you know, he was clipping like right under a six-minute mile, right? Assuming yep. You know. Yeah. And then I think it was they let you choose whatever lane, right? Isn't that how that works? Yeah, he, he, he took lane one. Yeah. Is he yeah, that's, why there? wouldn't he? Yeah. That's funny. I just saw my father-in-law cheering for him right back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, so, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, well, was going to say the production team, the TV production See, that's team. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You see that? Yeah. Yep. The production team called this event the double fister because it was so hard to it was a hard to cover to test to cover out. yeah yeah at the, at the well, time there there hadn't been a, a quite like a live tv yeah. test ever like that right like not even in i mean at least in iron man you know the track you know the movements who's going to be where this was so different Ooh. that and i believe you uh actually started earlier castro started the the event earlier than was originally planned yeah, so some people have. were caught off guard Wow, look how like that's crazy. The bit the lead that he had, he's only like a flip ahead of these guys. That's, that's what I'm saying. So this was one of the events that you just want to get through the run unscathed. You want to be in the middle mm -hmm. of the pack, and then boom, that's where you make your money. I mean, look at this. Now the middle of the pack is almost catching up. So now we're yeah. almost at 14 minutes. So you're right on that six minute. You know, if, if guys were clipping six minute miles, this is when they're basically coming in. You know, Lacey Kovacs. That's a name that I yeah hadn't thought about in a while like let's rope climb yeah, wizard. yeah. that's jordan um, troyon right next to him right yeah he jordan won the, yeah, he yeah. Won the pool. 
Yep. You know, was- you bring up a good point about this idea of, um, you know, being in the lead. The thing about the CrossFit Games is you want to be in the lead. You want to have every point possible. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, it's only day one. And so you have to go into every event, every time, ruthless. Like, you have to be ruthless because anything could happen. And so I think it feels good at night to lay your head to rest and say, hey, I'm in number one spot. But you know at that same point, tomorrow, you got to be ruthless just like you were today, you know? Yeah. 490 oh, pounds. I was wondering how much. 490 pounds, the original pig. There's actually one outside of where we're at right now, the yeah. same pig. Um, it's it's a, it's not fun to flip empty. Oh, man. it it You can see a lot of the athletes struggling with it. Like Lacey did pretty well just a second ago on the wide. You could see Jason just at, towards the top of the top center of the screen. And he, he had three or four flips in by the time the rest of the leaders had one or two in. And you were, you were starting to cook with this thing. Well, the thing about this pig was is that when I got in from the run, I was feeling pretty good, right? We, we had already game planned this. And I knew going into it that when I got halfway, like I was going to – when I got halfway, I knew that um, that's where I could really break away from the pack on mm. the pig. Because I remember I was like halfway through, and I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to say neck and neck, but close to other people. And I remember looking to my right because I think I was like, you know, on the left-hand side – and there was quite a few people you see how they were struggling. And I remember at that moment just being like, dude, this is this is mine. Like, this is mine. I'm mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep this going. And yeah, man, it was this was a hell of an event. Visually stunning, you know? Yeah, no, it was it was cool. I hated those 2013 jerseys because the zeros look like eights. Yeah. Yeah, you could see just rich, like some of that gear though was cool, man. I yeah, like the and the and the temperature right now is almost perfect, yeah, right? It, it was like bad. just overcast, not oh, there's crazy Jason, hot. You can right. see there's Jason already shorts, starting to catch yeah, up. Just yeah, crushing it. Wait, am I in the middle right there? Yeah, yeah I think that's you. Yeah. Dead center of the field. But you know what's crazy about this is that visually it's just so appealing. It's like some of the events we saw at the games mm-hmm. this year where like it's very easy to tell who's in the lead. And yeah, every flip made a, dicker, a difference. So like mm-hmm. let's just say – I know that sounds like an easy thing to recognize, but if you finish and you're five fi- flips ahead of somebody, there isn't that much more time after this moment in time to catch up. So when you're an mm-hmm. athlete on this – you know that you got to keep flipping because as soon as you know this, you're grabbing a log, you're running with it, and then you're pulling a sled. There's not much time if you're, you know what I mean, it, it, to, to make up. Yeah, there's I, not much room for jockeying of position. I for really sure. I feel too like this is one of the years, this seemed to be the year where they, where Dave really figured out how to you know, lay out an, uh, an event so that, like you said, Jason, you could tell who was in the lead if you were just a, ca- a casual viewer. Visually, because you know, a lot of times, like you would just go back and forth, and then you, you didn't really know. But the way that he they kind of figured out how to lay out a floor, you know, with rep markers and things like that, I mean, that, was, that made a huge difference. Yeah, well, this this yeah. is the first year that we are live there live on, live live on ESPN. Yeah, and so I think there yeah. was an onus to make it more visually appealing versus like the girls finale the year prior, where mm-hmm. it was just like everyone milling about. Mm-hmm. All right, here's your next test. Half six of you get cut. Get out of here. You know, let's go. Yeah. And this one right here, you know, the cheat code is you pull up, you get your knee underneath, right? And then you kick Mm -hmm. it and you push it as hard as you can. Well, I mean, where you get a little bounce, right? You want to push it. So what what I was doing is I was wearing gloves because those metal Mm -hmm. things sucked. I'd pull it up. I'd put my knee underneath. I'd drive it and I'd push it as hard as I could. So it got a bounce forward. Mm. Uh, That adds up. I mean, dude, a couple inches, (laughs) you know, enough. You might save yourself a flip. Yeah, over a hundred meters or a hundred yeah. yards. Man, he says, yeah. Yeah, because now now it's ten pig flips or fifteen flips. It's a designated amount of flips versus the distance. And That's this right. was, you know, this first year it was just the entire distance. And I, I I can imagine a lot of people, a lot of games athletes today, maybe shuddering at the fact that you guys had to push it clean across the soccer field mm-hmm. uh, for that first time. That's and, the farthest they've ever had to flip that thing, right? Yes, by, by far. far. Yeah. By far. Yeah, I mean, uh, dude. Yeah, this one, I mean, <laughs> every single flip. You know, this is one of those ones where, you know, you might look fatigued, and I was fatigued, and I kind of like, it's a little bit dramatic, but then you do got to get right back on. It's like it's like when you're doing barbell cycling. You got to hit it, yeah, take yeah. a couple deep breaths, and then boom, get back on. As soon as you lose that flow, dude, I mean, you're just going to lose your spot. How long did it take you to feel comfortable with this thing? Like, at what point in this event where you're like, okay, I, I got this? I think I was like um, maybe like four or five flips in yeah. where I was like, okay, I know how to do this because getting that knee involved and I mean, at the end of the day, man, if you if you weigh less and if you don't have a strong deadlift, you're mm-hmm. in a lot of trouble here because you're yeah. basically deadlifting it straight from the ground. Mm-hmm. 
And this, this is actually, it's funny because I know there's a picture out there of you doing one of your flips. Yeah. This is what, where, I mean, this is one of the, the, the pictures you hang up on the wall because right as you're doing that transition, you got a leg up and you're doing like that bicep yeah. curl. Oh, and you just look jacked. Dude, just straight jacked. Yeah. And so you see a lot of other guys are incorporating this technique as well. I mean, I wasn't the only one, but if you see, you can see my ASICs uh, fast shoes right there at the top of the screen. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you're right, uh, Tommy. You know, this is probably one of the most iconic. There's a few iconic pictures that I look back on. One of them was like me, Rich Froning, and Matt Chan standing. You got there. that one right oh, over there. It's, it's, it's literally right sitting right there. No, what? is it? Is it yeah, like Tommy's gonna go get it? Okay, yeah, you gotta bring it over. Yeah. And then uh, the other one was um, so there's that one, and then uh, uh, there's this one I'm doing like a DB snatch with a uh -huh. with a heavy dumbbell from regionals, and then there's another one with uh, the oh, dude, how do That's I get one? one? I gotta get I one. Know. We'll have to. We'll have to swipe that for you. We're, <laughs> just a couple of meat castles hanging yeah, by. I know, just a, I know. What was that? Are you at HQ or you're at the old HQ? Well, this is yeah. This is our yeah our studio. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's been sitting around here. So yeah, we got that picture. Dude, I gotta get that. I, yeah, that's. So at this point in time, right? If you look at where we're at, especially for people who are just listening to this, um, you got you got a couple guys that are trying to break away from the pack. And when you look at it from side to side, you're thinking like, damn, dude, they're only like one or two flips. But every flip, if you think about it, is like, I don't know, what do you think? 20 seconds? 10? Well, yeah. And the thing that this portion of the event really reminds me of is like just how inconsequential the run was. <laughs> you know, really, because yeah. it's like you had guys that were you know, way in the back and now all of a sudden they're towards the front. Like it just didn't like that lead that Gary Fisher built didn't help him at all. Right, right. And I mean, I think there's other events like this that happen at the CrossFit Games. When you look at it, you have to be aware from an athlete perspective and even as a fan perspective is being like, you know, you want to get all excited about the person mm -hmm. who's winning. But I mean, you know, it's a long event. This is going to be a, what, what is this? Like going to be like a 35 minute event? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, I want to say you, Jason, you were somewhere around 28 ish. Yeah. I remember off the top of my head, yeah, but because the sled pinned a lot of people, and and it's crazy because like the run, obviously twelve minutes and change for you know for Garrett, but you he's spending almost as much at this point on the on the pig flips alone. Yeah, and so you know, I just remember when I got to this point, I'm like, all right, now I gotta, now I gotta, done. I gotta, I gotta make it happen now. I gotta pick up this log. How am I gonna carry it visually? It, like in my mind, I had not approach this before right mm -hmm. so i said what technique do i want to use so you pick it up and i'm like all right well i'll try the shoulder and and then i ended up i think like putting it double on my back yeah yeah, yeah. Back. that yeah there, there was that really thing was hard. i heard people were getting their ears torn up like there was a, like with the old worm too that because there, it was all was, wood was there any like splinters or anything like that or was it pretty stable for you yeah, it was pretty stable but i mean at this point you know i think i was walking kind of like regaining my composure and looking around at the other athletes and just saying like, what do I need to do to get into that yeah, sled go. first? And then that's where I was like, okay, I see where the athletes are at. I got to go. I got to yeah. go right now. Yeah. You know? Well, the, well, the nice part is it, it's all the entire field going. So as you're looking, you're looking at every single person. So you know, you don't have to worry about another heat. You don't have to worry about another, uh, another, mm -hmm. uh, you know, grouping of athletes behind you. And you just, you, I mean, you're kind of, you kind of have the visual control of, you have the high ground if that you want. It bigger than I remember. It, it looks a lot bigger. You're, you're absolutely right, Tommy, in the sense that in this particular case, when you get to the sled, and you'll see what I do here, is that it, it, there is no other heats going. So as long as I win, it doesn't matter if I win at yeah. 28 minutes or 27 minutes. It's irrelevant, right? But you could see a big group comes in, and when they grab that log, there's kind of like, I mean, you can see Rich. Like, how am I going to carry this? And this is one of those things too, where like this would not fly today because everyone is doing a different distance because they made you walk straight to the track and then turn. You couldn't like cut lanes. Yeah, like okay. that—that's that's an advantage for guys who. I mean, so that's where the run, I guess, did matter. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, yeah. Oh well, I mean, I was in the middle of the pack and I was in the middle of the, mm -hmm. the field, so it wasn't like the end of the world. But yeah, you're right. There's it's still, yeah. And especially when it's tight like this, and if you look at people's speed. You know, at this point in time, when you're an athlete, you know, you got to kind of be fast jogging it, whatever you got to do. But what I think when you're a fan, you're watching is like, Jason, why aren't you jogging? It's like, bro, <laughs> this thing was so awkward. Uh -huh. Now, wait until you see my dad. I think I think he was on this thread. My dad basically like stole a media pass or something like that. Yeah, he and, was like in the uh, underbelly, like, or the yeah, under, he, like of the And he's on there. his again, like chasing after me. <laughs> Let's see. That's a man. The, the StubHub Center was such a cool... 
Dude, it was. Cool venue. That and, was awesome. But we'll say that's where the run did matter if you cared about positioning. Yeah. Right? For Marcus like, Hendren, like yeah. the further you back you were on the run, the further you had to run with the log. I don't know if you can get away with that today, but no, you wouldn't. it was it was like a reward, a risk reward mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Which 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 I get that. But I mean, you know what's interesting? Looking back on it now, I haven't I haven't watched this like this, you know, pretty much mm -hmm. ever. I haven't watched yeah, me neither. And you know, you don't really see athletes jogging or I mean, I guess you have Hendren who's kind of jogging or fast walking. And I think the reason for that, you know, Austin Meliolo, uh, is that it's just with that log was just so awkward. It wasn't that heavy, it was just awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hendren looked comfortable with it because yeah. he, I mean, he's a farm guy. He's, yeah, he's carrying all sorts of odd objects and sacks of feed. And <laughs> Froning was walking with it like it was a case of Bud Heavies and it was a yeah. you know, Saturday night at Tennessee Tech. Yeah. And, you know, this is a longer, you know, kind of traverse than you, than you think. You know, that's a pretty long. Look at, I think that's my dad. That's my dad and mom right there running. <laughs> uh, that's them. <laughs> that's my dad. That's my mom <laughs> oh, look, right at that. look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is, yeah, uh, that's crazy. You, you said it in the broadcast right there. <laughs> yeah. So, so Lacey Kovacs was chasing three Kalipas at that point. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, this is tough when you're, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I was in the lead in this case because, dude, I mean, there's, again, you know, going into it, like my mindset was I have to get in here with the biggest lead possible. I yeah. have to get on that sled as soon as I can. I want to go halfway. And then I know that if I'm halfway and no one started, I won this event hands down. That was my mindset going mm -hmm. in. Oh, man. just Even just God, seeing the, yeah, under, know. That's the underbelly of the stuff up be, yeah. Dude, brings back oh, memories. Oh, man. Yeah, the warm-up area underneath there. and uh, You know, when we first went to Stub Hunt, man, we we, we, we made it, dude. We made yeah, it. I remember, yeah, and there was like no one in the stands, but it was still like it was so cool. We made it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there was even an event, that, a full event that took place when they did the broad jump on, underneath there as well. Oh man, that PM truck right there. <laughs> Look at this though. Now this is the moment that you know. I, I think there was some people over in the football field or whatnot, but I think this is the moment where the soccer stadium. Hopefully, you know, I think they were broadcasting it, uh, and so they knew who's coming in. Yeah, and this yeah, is what yep. this is what I was thinking That's about. That's awesome. You know? It's it's like you, all the icon iconic moments of sports, whether it's like. Walking out of the Rose Bowl and there football, <laughs> or or Madison Square Garden coming onto the floor and basketball, like like getting this moment was was pretty sweet, dude. This is, I, I think probably, I mean, I, this was the best competition moment I think I've ever experienced. Um, I've had a lot of great ones, but this one was the best because, like I said, my mindset was get in there, take that sled. I know I'm gonna be able to handle it, but I, I didn't know how heavy it was at the time, right? I didn't know what it would feel like. Mm -hmm. So at least get halfway, and then at that point you could take a breath and really start to like, you know, you know, recognize how powerful this is. You can even hear a light uh, from the audio, just a light pop of the crowd yeah, as Jason once you started pulling. Yeah. It was this shot. This shot yeah. to me was just awesome. Anytime you could see that no one was there behind you, and you're in this like active, like constant like state of work 310 on that Man. thing uh, i think we awesome. also have like a spider cam shot of this too at some point that i maybe yeah. i maybe i'm misremembering that yeah, what, yeah there it is well one of my favorite visuals of the games was these i did rod sleds and how they looked once the yeah. full field was on it because it just looked so yeah. primal and, and how everyone was pulling That's it so cool all yeah. by yourself man so i think if i'm not mistaken i'm gonna stop right here and i remember at that time i knew how heavy the sled was and i knew where i was at in terms of the pack and that's where I had a moment to kind of like take it all in. And these are the best of moments that I've ever had was this and also the half marathon row because I knew I was going to win before I won. And those that's very rare in sport, especially in CrossFit. This is Look at that. That's, that's a just, shot from the spider. Oh, that's man. awesome. That's that just looks cool. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think we had talked about this previously, Jason, that like you don't get that in the all out sprints. You don't get that in the ones where mm -hmm. like you have no time to think like, that's the benefit of of the longer tests if you are good at them that you do get some time to think and soak soak in you know the accomplishment of the moment yeah especially something like this i knew there wasn't another heat after me i knew i just had to finish first and i was able to see these guys coming up on me and i knew how heavy it was and uh yeah this was this is the highlight of this is one of the top highlights of my career i mean aside from a few team usa stuff and that's that's about it it was great and this, honestly, three. This you know, this is going to make three consecutive 
you know, event wins to start the weekend. And I think I, I, I remember the collective CrossFit world just kind of being on fire, like Jason's back, like this is yeah. awesome, right? Because, you know, like you were in the podium discussion every year, you know, and obviously, you know, they had some ups and downs uh, on the leaderboard, but this was like the setup for like the return. Yeah, man, this was, this was a big deal. And uh, look, just going in, see now that look at that technique where I don't know who that person is right there walking with it, but they they pulled the ropes further so they yeah. lifted the sled a little bit up. Is that yeah? That might have been Rich in the bottom of the screen with no shirt. Yeah, who's got it hiked up like that? It might yeah, be. You know what? It might be. Is it that's, Rich? That's Ben Smith. Like so he ben, got, I remember ben, he like got. Ben finished second. Oh, oh it's, uh, it's Garrett. No, no. that's uh, Vino, I think. Oh, is that Garrett right there? V no. Vino, Vino wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't in it then. I don't know who that was. There was Albert Dominic Larouche who was, was there. No, that was Albert right there who just I think came across on the gray. Look at that, Daniel man. Petro. Oh, oh that's, that's who it was. Oh, yeah. yeah, Quadzilla. Oh man. But as an athlete, you know, after this moment, you know, you're sitting there and you're just like, man, you're just you're just grateful. You're grateful for the that. fans. You're grateful for the opportunity. And you're glad that your training had paid off. You know, that, yeah. that's really what it came down to. Jason Kaliba and Ben Smith, one and two in the burden run. Yeah. The OGs right there. There's Rich. And and you're kind of like, that's the other cool part, right? Like, because it's a longer test, like, you're getting to sit there and soak it in, too. Like, you sign, you sign your car, scorecard. You're out there on the soccer field. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like this moment of, like, revelry that you get to, to kind of bask in. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, afterwards, I remember there was a few people having a really difficult time. I think that might be Garrett right there. Yeah, I mean, it was Garrett came across. Yeah, he, cl he clipped Rich at the line. Oh, so he, it's Rich yeah, who got pinned here. Yeah, yeah he got he slipped. Look how primal that looks. I know. Like, it, lo like, like you, it's, it looks like a caged animal trying yeah. to get across. Wow. You see that Saturday Night Live with Mike Myers played Philip when they would tell her that's what yeah. everybody knew. <laughs> I didn't know. Look at those. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's it's driving it across. Drive. Uh. See, nowadays they wouldn't have it where your person has to cross. They would probably have it where the full sled is. Yeah, you yeah. have to the sled at a certain then you could, then you'd have to run across the finish line. I don't think we had you obviously didn't have chip timing for this. Uh, no, we did. Yeah. yeah. Did we? There was a chip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Where was yeah. the line? Was it? I think they, so I think back then they had to bury it under the That's field. That's right. They did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so like that, that line where the, the pylon was, uh, designated where okay. they had buried That's it. That's right. Now it's like that. lasers or something. Yeah. And, and there's all sorts of different. Well, no, now cool that I think they have it under a mat or they have it run in. Yeah. It's might be the same thing. It's included it's in the floor print yeah. plan. So it's like a little bit easier to, to move around and navigate. But oh, oh man, that guy's really that. I don't know who that is, but Freddy there's Freddie oh, there is. Yeah. yeah. And so at this point, you know, I, did you have any sort of idea of you know what the standings were, who was behind you, and you know, are you thinking about any of that when, when this happens, or, or is it just like, hey man, I, I got a hundred points, I'm happy? No, you know, because the the reality is at that point, again, um, I, yeah, I was just stoked. Like you don't really care. I mean. The, the fact that Ben got second or whatever, like all I know is yes, you obviously want to know where Rich where Rich goes. I just checked; mm -hmm. he got seventh on this. That was still a great performance. You want to know where he was at because at the time he was definitely the man to beat. Uh, mm -hmm. But aside from that, um, and you know, it's a weird feeling, right? Like I do not wish. I want to win, but I don't wish negative yeah, yeah. on others. If that makes sense, like I'm very competitive, and I came out there to win. I hope all of them would too. Um, but I don't want them to, you know, get hurt or suffer or whatever. But, you know, if Rich is middle of the pack on this event, I'm not complaining about yeah, it. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm there to win, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, Matt Chan. Is that Dan, Dan Bailey? Dan Bailey yeah. with the red. Yeah, Matt yeah, Chan, Dan Bailey, let's go. 2013. We saw, we saw a young <laughs> Travis Mayer there yeah. a second ago. Yeah. This was such a cool event. Oh. That's this was one of those two where... Ryan Miller? I, yeah, I, where I... You, you hear the like you hear the description of it, and you're like, "Oh, that sounds pretty cool." And then they actually go out and do it. And you're like, "Oh, that was awesome!" Right? Yeah, That's exactly what it felt like too. Like, I think for me, the reason why this stands out is like I visualized success, and I was able to go out there and I was able to embrace the moment before I finished. And that's yeah. another thing that the half marathon did. I, I'll never forget for the half marathon before this. Like, two things I know: I won the two k. And I won the half marathon, but I didn't know where the 2K mark was at. So I just went crazy. 
I went crazy until seven minutes in because I knew at seven minutes I had to have done a 2K. Yeah. It was very difficult to determine where the 2K was because of the meter total. Mm -hmm. It was like a half marathon row is like, you know, some random amount of meters. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it, I think it's like 21,097 or something like that. So yeah. you don't have the exact clean number. And then you're like in the middle of your 2K row and you're thinking, okay, I got to get to this point. And then you're like, you know what, dude, I totally forget what that was. Let's just go till seven. I'll figure it out. And, but on the half marathon, I remember, uh, Neil was behind me and he was doing phenomenal. And with Neil, I think if I'm not mistaken, I got to a point where there was like X amount of minutes left and I, and I based it on, you know, speed of a 500 meter. Mm -hmm. And I knew that like with four to six minutes left in that event, it was basically statistically impossible for anybody to catch me. And that's when I was really able to embrace the moment too. Mm -hmm. That's Scott Panchik. Dude, he flew through that last part. Man. Alex Nettie. Alex yeah. Nettie. Dude, good old StubHub. Or um, uh, Home Depot Center at the time? Was it it's Home StubHub. Depot? It was a StubHub now. W was it Stub StubHub yeah. then? Yeah. yeah. Good old cool. StubHub, man. Do y'all remember when we walked up and I got my first credential for being there? And it was like, <laughs> was like yeah. yeah, baby. We made it. <laughs> oh, man. I had I had a moment like that in the tennis stadium, actually. I think it was 2012. It was the first year I'd ever done it. And I just I was so happy to be there, like doing this thing that I didn't think I was ever gonna get a chance to do again. And I remember just looking up and I think it was it was the double it was the uh the double banger. Double banger was that 20, that year? Yeah, 2012. Banger, yeah. yeah, I just yeah. it was the, during that and I just looked around and I'm like, man, this is so freaking cool. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah it was you know what's interesting about the sport then and now? You got guys who are like kind of walking around cheering each other on. And I think that's great for the camaraderie and the community of CrossFit, especially back then. It was so different. Many of the people competing were all, um, you know, gym owners and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? Where now it's not really like that as much. But it is interesting to see where the sport will go in the future, right? Because I think the camaraderie, the community, it's, it's excellent. But at the same time, you know, we've talked about this a little bit too. Like, who's going to stand out as like that guy? Who's going to stand yeah. out as like the villain guy who doesn't want to walk <laughs> and talk to anybody, you know? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. For exactly. sure. Who's going to be the Conor McGregor of the sport? Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to be the Gordon Dan Ryan? Bailey. Conor McGregor. Yep. Yeah. Slobbering. Gosh. Oh, with his, with his bandana on? Or, uh, yeah, his, his red headband? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> My favorite part is the, the judge always comes over, keeps signing, and she's like, eh. <laughs> yeah, he's just making an X. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I'd love to look back at what some of my scorecards look like. Just like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. A couple wavy lines. Yep. <sighs> oh, it's brutal. It's brutal, yeah. man. Cleats on that would have been a lot better. But yeah, have... that's the thing. I'm surprised. Well, I mean, what are you going to You can't really swap shoes, but. I, yeah. I, I would have been curious. I don't know if they would have left allowed it at the time, but just left a pair of cleats on the way out. So you just slip your shoes off and slip those. Even like cleats that are kind of loosely tied. I mean, you I lose what? 30 seconds. How long does it take you to tie that your guy. shoes? I, I mean, you still look that way too, man. You don't age. Oh man. I, you know, I was a little <laughs> bit more, uh, my, uh, my hair was a little bit, uh, trimmed a little bit more shaved chest. Uh, I don't quite have that. A um, little bit leaner, but uh, I'm getting back there. I'm getting back there. You look good. Man. All right. Look at that. 28, 58. 58.2 seconds. Only person sub 29. Dang. Almost a full minute ahead of Ben Smith. What's Rich saying to you right now? Oh, he's probably saying, you did an excellent job. What have you been doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to him today, actually. Uh, we were just kind of riffing back and forth about a few things. So look at the Parker's it, ruined. It's cool to think that here we are 10 years ago and I'm still texting with Rich this, this morning. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Look at that beard. There he is. He was, Man, he's a fun guy. He's a good follow on Instagram too. He's got he's some great stuff. Funny. Yeah. What a great event. Yeah, here's Zach Swan, Forrest. Zach yeah. Forrest, yeah. Zach, I remember Zach getting getting pinned by the, the, the pig. What was the cap? 45 minutes? 40. 40, okay. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, if you do that pig was... I mean, the pig was the the, the event. The, the pig was the event. I mean, it looks 100%. like the, the sled was a little bit harder than I, than I remembered it, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. 
And this is like we mentioned it earlier, like the race order determining where you come oh, in. Yeah, this is also just a mofo. Like you have to walk in, you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> your spot. Yeah, you got the parking spot all the way at the end there, buddy. Well, yep. If I'm not mistaken, I, I think when I walked in, I, I remember this like asking my because I, you know, you're basically like fast walking, like, hey, where do I go? If I'm not mistaken, he just said basically you pick a spot, right? So it does pay to get into the arena first. Mm -hmm, like yeah. I don't think you were going to the same spot that you you know came out of. Yeah. I think he just kind of picked whatever and went with it. Oh, Bridges trying to give Orlando Treo a little bit of does Bridges know Spanish? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think uh, no, Orlando Mogard. Wow, yeah. This is yeah, uh Mogard was uh was he at a Asia or Africa that year? I think year. he was, I want to say Asia. And I, didn't he pull both? He, like he, he pulled, pulled both his hamstrings. And then he still did the and sprint event. Yeah, yeah, still got out there. With yeah, he was Asia because David Levy right there yeah. was, from, was from Africa. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Man. Wow. Yeah, poor oh, oh no shoes. shoes. Oh, uh, brutal. He was Alex Gazan before Alex Gazan. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, that's Gazan. They're going to fall. I, I, it was always good to see like uh, Orlando go out there. He was a better gym CrossFitter than he was games mm -hmm. athlete, you know, because he yeah. would put up some competitive scores in the open and some of like the classic CrossFit. Where's our hero shot? Oh, Wes Pyatt. Yeah, it was oh. Orlando. Miranda. Uh, it was, uh, Mar Miranda. She's gonna, You're about to get gonna... interviewed by Miranda. I don't think we can show that. Do you want to? You want to show this? Nah, we're good. All right. There we go. We'll pause it on that. There's a the yeah. hero. Woo! There's a the guy who won it all, everybody. Man, I awesome. gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back to shaving my chest. That's the my, California my bear himself. <laughs> That's my big takeaway for right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twenty you better grooming up. Twenty thirteen yeah. Burden Run, Manscaped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Before the CrossFit Games, you know, I'd always, you know, I, I like to keep it, you know, I like to keep it classy most of the time. But before the games, <laughs> I'd go down to basically just as as shaven as possible. My excuse was, this is what I told myself. That if there was a swim event, I wanted to be as fast as possible. <laughs> Which is <laughs> BS. <laughs> but really what it was, but really what it was, I wanted to look as lean as possible. Yeah, you want to look good for the cameras, man. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That was awesome. Well, Jason, man, thanks for doing that. That was, that was a fun, that was fun to relive that. I uh I forgot how cool of an event that was. was. Dude, yeah, it was. And uh I gotta I will reach out to you about that picture that you have, that black and white one. That's yeah, cool. we might it might disappear from this office here pretty Oh soon. man, hey, if it does, <laughs> we don't know where it went. But I have uh, no idea. Yeah. No idea. It's just uh <laughs> It might just walk out in some place and wind up at a at MC Fit one day. We'll see, dude. But I, yeah, this was this was a lot of fun. I I enjoy, dude. There's just endless, uh, you know, events that, you know, they have a way of kind of like just staying in your brain. You know, mm -hmm. I think for you guys, you guys probably remember them commentating or being there. And as an athlete, you know, you have certain memories and, and things. And I just think with this one, it's like to the confidence that it built in me coming off of three wins the the moment of like dave talking about it and being able to go in there and visualize and execute on it it was just like it's just something you look back and like dude that was badass like mm -hmm. man you know so it, i appreciate you guys helping me relive that yeah thanks for, for helping us sure, do that man that was a lot that was a lot of fun and uh you know think of another one you want to do we'll have you back and we'll uh we'll go through <laughs> another one of those you know what we should do the past the 2009 cross the games where i passed out oh oh my god <laughs> or, <laughs> or the 2010 amanda oh Oh, I, we we almost broke the. Gym. Is that where you almost killed the camera? Yeah, guy? almost killed oh, the camera dude. guy. <laughs> yeah. There's a shot of the camera guy fielding him, and then you realize Jason's walking to him, and you could like almost hear it in his brain go, oh, 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 and then the camera gets wobbly, and they cut away from it. So bad, bro. So uh -huh. bad. I learned a lot yeah. from that moment. That was that was a big learning lesson for yeah. me. Well, Jason, thanks a lot, man. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that's our first ever edition of TEF Rewind with Jason Kleep in the 2013 Burden Run. Guys, Jason, take care, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.